<laughs> Harris, I have a few more questions. Because of the distance, and the mics are really in lousy shape, but I cannot understand so, are you asking a what you're saying. So what I wanted to say was, the last time we spoke, you said some words that were prophetic, because I asked you who you wanted to choose for vice president. Yeah. And you said normally, it really wouldn't matter what they would bring, you know, you choose some. Welcome to the Ports Garrison. Please like, subscribe, and share. Thank you. And welcome to the Ports Garrison. I am Phil Deport, your host. And if you're joining me for the first time, I implore you to consider subscribing to the channel. That is if you like the many and varied topics and subjects that we cover. Now, for my returning viewers and subscribers, as always, it's enough love, enough manners, enough respects. Now, what's on my mind today? As you can see from the opening clip, there's a, there's a clip of um, presidential candidate Donald Trump, former President Donald Trump, reaching across the, to grab a bottle of water belonging to the lady Ruth, sorry, Rachel Scott, that it belonged to. He was reaching to grab her bottle of water, uncorked it and then corked it and put it back. Now, nobody has commented on that and I'm wondering what was the significance of that moment. But how did they get to that point? The National Association of Black Journalists had... A convention and Trump was invited and it started out very fine from the opening opening salvages um, Rachel Scott senior correspondence congressional correspondence for ABC News um, started and she wanted to get the white elephant out of the room so she made refer to some statements Trump had made in the past and asked him to comment on those Trump on those statements and he, he didn't like the question he didn't like the attack particularly I think coming from a black woman and here here is how that went down. So let's bring out the former president of the United States, the Republican nominee for president, former president Donald Trump. Mr. President, we so appreciate you giving us an hour of your time. I want to start by addressing the elephant in the room, sir. A lot of people did not think it was appropriate for you to be here today. You have pushed false claims about some of your rivals, from Nikki Haley to former President Barack Obama, saying that they were not born in the United States, which is not true. You have told four congresswomen women of color who were American citizens to go back to where they came from. You have used words like animal and rabbit to describe black district attorneys. You've attacked black journalists, calling them a loser, saying the questions that they ask are, quote, stupid and racist. You've had dinner with a white supremacist at your Mar-a-Lago resort. So my question, sir, now that you are asking black supporters to vote for you, why should black voters trust you after you have used language like that? Well, first of all, I don't think I've ever been asked a question so, in, in such a horrible manner, a first question. <laughs> you don't even say, hello, how are you? Are you with ABC? Because I think they're a fake news network, a terrible network. <laughs> and I think it's disgraceful that I came here in good spirit. Uh, I love the black population of this country. I've done so much for the black population of this country. Uh, including uh, employment, including uh, opportunity zones with Senator Tim Scott of South Carolina, which is one of the greatest programs ever for uh, black workers and black entrepreneurs. I've uh, done so much, and you know, and I say this, uh, historically black colleges and universities were out of money, they were stone cold broke, and I saved them, and I gave them long-term financing, and nobody else was doing it. I think it's a very rude introduction. I don't know exactly why you would do something like that. And let me go a step further. I was invited here, and I was told my opponent, whether it was Biden or Kamala, uh, I was told my opponent was going to be here. It turned out my opponent isn't here. You invited me under false pretense. And then you said, you can't do it with Zoom. Well, uh, you know, where's Zoom? She's going to do it with Zoom, and she's not coming. And then you were half an hour late, just so we understand. I have too much respect for you to be late. 
they couldn't get their equipment working or something Mr. was President, wrong. I, would love I think you it's a very nasty question. Well, I, I have answered the question. I have years. been the best president for the black population since Abraham Lincoln. Better That's than, my answer. Better than President That's Johnson who signed the Voting Rights Act. And for you to start off a question and answer period, especially when you're 35 minutes late because you couldn't get your equipment to work, in such a hostile manner, I think it's a, a disgrace. I let really me, do. Let I me just ask a, a follow-up, sir, and then we'll move on to other questions here. Uh, some of your own supporters, including Republicans on Capitol Hill, have labeled Vice President Kamala Harris, who is the first black and Asian American woman to serve as vice president and be on a major party ticket, as a DEI hire. Is that acceptable language to you? And will you tell those Republicans and those supporters to stop it? How do you, how do you define DEI? Go ahead. How do you define Diversity, it? equity, inclusion. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Is that what your definition? Give that me is, a, that, that give, is Give me a definition the then. Would you give me a definition DI. of that? Give me a definition sir, of that. Sir, I'm asking you a question, no, no, a you very have to direct define question. It. Define, the, define it for me, if you I would. just defined it, sir. Do you believe that Vice President Kamala Harris is only on the ticket because she is a black woman? Well, I can say, no, I think it's maybe a little bit different. So, uh, I've known her a long time indirectly, not directly very much, and she was always of Indian heritage, and she was only promoting Indian heritage. I didn't know she was black until a number of years ago when she happened to turn black, and now she wants to be known as black. So I don't know, is she Indian or is she black? She has always but identified you know as a black woman. I respect she went to a historically either one. black college. I respect either one, but she obviously doesn't because she was Indian all the way, and then all of a sudden she made a turn and she went. She became a black person. Just to be clear, sir, do and you I believe think, that she I think she somebody should look into that, too, when you ask a continue in a very hostile, nasty tone. It's a direct question, sir. Do you believe that Vice President Kamala Harris is a DEI hire, as I, some Republicans I really have don't said? Know. I mean, I really don't know. Could be. Could be. There are some, and there are uh, plenty. I know this lady right over there, Harris, is a fantastic person who just interviewed me at length. <laughs> And we had a great interview, I think, and I heard you got very good ratings on that. Well, you interview. told me it was the longest one of your life, so <laughs> we had a good discussion. Now, Trump also had to deal with a question, as you saw, of um, Kamala Harris's um, ancestry, whether she was black. And interestingly, Trump had, had to say that she's now become black. Um, how do you become black? Um, it, it's, it's, it's rather interesting, and I implore you to go watch the entire. Um, interview or question and answer because he ref he ref they asked him what he considered to be black jobs and he said any job that somebody has I mean bonkers um, no but interestingly for me is during the session Trump, Trump has a bottle of water and a glass to his right he reached across to Rachel's bo bottle took it up uncorked it corked it back and then put it down is it that he thought it was his bottle and then when he, he picked it up he realized it wasn't his to so put it back down could that be it could it be that he thought she was going to open it and throw it at him so he make sure he cocked it could it be that he was thinking of throwing it at her could it be that it was a mind game he was playing could it be could it be tell me what you think what you think it is it's just i know nothing no, no significance. Tell me what you think it is. But to me, I find it so interesting that he grabbed her bottle, uncorked it, then corked it back, then put it down. It could be nothing, but I still found it rather interesting. Take another look of it, at it and then tell me in the comment section what your thoughts are. Until something else stirs my mind, my thoughts, I want to always thank you for watching and wish you all the best. One love, enough manners, enough respects. Blessing. Harris, I have a few more questions. Because of the distance, and the mics are really in lousy shape, but I cannot understand so, are you asking a what you're saying. So what I wanted to say was the last time we spoke, you said some words that were prophetic because I asked you who you wanted to choose for vice president. Yeah. And you said normally it really wouldn't matter what they would bring. You know, you choose somebody. Thanks for watching.